That's it. They've gone too far. No more running and hiding. It's time to fight back. In a battle for cartoon supremacy, shows are constantly trying to outwit, diss, and put each other down. The same applies to Futurama, the animated series from Simpsons creator Matt Groening. Over the course of seven seasons, the series pulled no punches as it dissed other shows like Family Guy, South Park, The Simpsons, and yes, even little Dora the Explorer. See how clever the show took on these other animations and delivered a ton of laughs along the way. <laughs> Sweet Bongo of the Congo! Family Guy loves dishing out the jokes, never holding back against shows like The Simpsons and Futurama. Well, Futurama decided to get back at the show with a clever burn that probably cut deep into the Family Guy's writing staff. In the 2007 straight-to-video movie entitled Bender's Big Score, we watch as Fry hangs up a calendar. But not just any calendar, a Family Guy one. Stewie and Peter Griffin happily adorn the calendar, but the kicker is the title, 12 Laughs a Year. That's basically like a single laugh every other episode within the course of a Family Guy season. Family Guy creator Seth MacFarlane obviously didn't take the joke too hard though. In 2013, he voiced Fry's dog Seymour during a dream sequence. In the sequence, the dog suddenly sits on the couch and holds a martini. MacFarlane does his best Brian voice for a bit in a little fun nod to Family Guy. Philip, have you lost weight? If you dive deep into the comic book world of Futurama, you'll also find some Family Guy disses, including a guy from the future who claims he can sell anything. Anything except a complete 723 episode series set of Family Guy. The world of actors on animated shows often includes a small circle of highly recognizable voices. This includes Bender's voice actor John DiMaggio. DiMaggio not only voices the infamous robot, but he also uses his dog for Jake the Dog from Adventure Time. I'm oh, sorry, it's a lot of pressure, man. So, it was only fitting that Bender and Jake would cross paths. It happened on Futurama in the episode Leela and the Jeanstalk. As Bender explores the castle, he comes across Jake and Finn tied up in the basement. Jake coyly tries to ask him, What time is it? Time for you to shut up! Despite being from the same voice actor, both voices are considerably different. We have to wonder if he recorded the lines back to back or if he had to do a separate take. Either way, the meta world created a fun gag that also managed to disadventure time at the same time. With both The Simpsons and Futurama being created by Matt Groening, there was bound to be a lot of cross-references, and the two shows even crossed over for the special Simpsorama back in 2014. Well, Futurama took the chance to diss The Simpsons multiple times, including the Season 7 episode, Irreconcilable Differences. In the episode, a Comic-Con takes place where Graining announces a new series named Futurella. The moderator makes it clear that they won't be answering any Simpsons questions. But this doesn't stop Bender from stepping up and inquiring about a second Simpsons movie before Graining blasts some laser shots at him. The joke was mainly aimed towards the Simpsons fanbase, who often ignores Graining's time with Futurama and will ask questions like Bender's. Futurama loves to stick small jokes and gags into the backgrounds of episodes. The show always has a ton of details and hidden jokes you miss the first time around. Professor, stop! You're giving away personal information! I can afford to give away anything I want! I've won the Spanish National Lottery! Check out the scene from the feature-length Bender's Big Score to see if you can spot the South Park reference. Find it? Yep. Up in the top corner of the screen is... Cartman's preserved head. We have to wonder how Cartman made the journey from South Park all the way to the head museum, but there he is. The other heads probably get annoyed real fast as Cartman goes on rants, sings songs, and comes up with ideas for Adam Sandler movies. Considering the early days of South Park, we're surprised the animators didn't decide to stick Kenny's head up in the head museum. Another quick South Park gag comes in the episode Near Death Wish. After Fry wins a delivery boy award, he storms out of the ceremony and proclaims, And the fish sticks were limp! The pun was a clear homage to the South Park episode Fish Sticks, the one where Kanye West is the only person on Earth who doesn't get Jimmy's fish sticks joke. In the episode Saturday Morning Fun, the show takes a whole different direction, creating some funny parodies of classic Saturday morning cartoons. One of the highlights was the obvious Scooby-Doo parody entitled Bendy Boo and the Mystery Crew. Just the opening song alone features a ton of disses for old Scooby and his gang. Let's break them all down now. The song lyrics, You're Such a Lousy Mascot, 
Ouch. Someone doesn't like the goofy dog, but they don't stop there. The next line, no one understands a word you say. Don't worry though, Scooby isn't the only victim as they also sing about the jerk in the ascot. We're looking at you, Freddy. The short continues to lay heavy on Scooby-Doo, with references to their random celebrities like the Harlem Globetrotters and a team of Larry Bird clones. Even though the short was meant to mock Scooby and the gang, the whole thing felt like it could have worked as a real Scooby episode. It didn't take long for Futurama to reference The Simpsons as we see a direct shout out to their semi-related show in the 8th episode of the series. When a giant ball of garbage threatens to destroy Earth, Fry, Leela, and Bender must travel to the ball of garbage, which turns out to be filled with all types of trash from the 20th century. Among the debris, a giant pile of Bart Simpson dolls. The dolls represent the onslaught of Simpsons merchandise that was first released back in the early 90s. The Bart dolls were everywhere, and 30 years later, stores are still full of Simpsons merchandise. Obviously, humans didn't care too much for the stuffed Barts, as so many of them ended up in the giant trash ball. When Bender picks up a Bart doll, he utters his infamous, eat my shorts line, which Bender takes literally. Bender then does his best Homer impression, uttering, mmm, shorts. The fun dig at the Simpsons was a great way to connect the shows years before the actual Futurama and Simpsons crossover took place. The episode Yo Leela Leela allowed the writers to take the whole world of children's cartoons head on. When Leela writes a hit children's show, we get to see all of the other shows that will be popular in the future. To no one's surprise, SpongeBob is still going strong, only this time he's a robot known as SpongeBot Squarebolts. The design clearly showcases SpongeBob's eyes and nose, and just like today, the show is the top one before Leela's comes around. The quick gag was a fun shout out. In the world of animation, you cannot deny the influence and popularity of SpongeBob, even if you are on an animated show catered towards adults. The episode also takes things further, showcasing the fictional Tickelodeon Network. The network airs hits like Extreme Toddler Wrestling and Captain Mega Meat and Bottomless Boy, two shows we would love to see on the network anytime now. The season 8 episode, The Tip of the Zoidberg, featured a subplot where Fry was getting diagnosed with a variety of diseases. Turns out, each one was based on a popular cartoon. First, there was the moment when Fry's body rejected a liver and he got Garfield syndrome, which made him look like the sly cat and develop a case of the Mondays. Another fun Simpsons gag, Fry's skin turned yellow as he was diagnosed with Simpsons jaundice. Fry followed up his diagnosis with another popular catchphrase, I crumba. Fry also turned green as the Simpsons' jaundice transformed into a case of mutant gangrene. Yikes. Now, although health issues aside, it would be fun to transfer into one of our favorite cartoon characters, even if just for a day. SpongeBob wasn't the only victim of the episode, yo, Leela Leela. The show even took funny shots at one of Nick Jr.'s biggest hits, Dora the Explorer. When Leela attends the 3011 Young People's Choice Awards, we get to see a fun selection of nominated shows. The highlight among them was the last nomination, Dora the Destroyer. Yeah, Dora's grown up, but not in a PG live action movie. She grew up by replacing her trusty map with a machine gun. Her colorful outfit is replaced with a camo outfit, and along with Dora, check out the hilarious nominees. The format of the episode really allowed the writers to flourish as they came up with some pretty absurd and hilarious ideas. Ideas. Yo Gimme Gimme looks like a parent's worst nightmare when going through the store, and the adventures of Pitbull and Scarity Squirrel probably didn't last past one episode. Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade is viewed as a happy annual tradition, but not so much for the giant balloons we've seen go through destruction over the years. Some of those victims were featured in Leela's homeworld. One of the main highlights, Bart Simpson. Bart Simpson had a huge float debut in the 1990 Thanksgiving Day Parade, but by 1995, the thing was banished and has not appeared since. Bart went through many problems over the years. Body parts deflate, he nearly crashed into a building, and he just keeps falling apart. 1993 may have been his worst year as his t-shirt got all torn up by a street lamp. Well, some of those pieces were salvaged for the Frankenstein-styled balloon featured on Futurama. Other characters mixed in, the classic cartoon underdog Bullwinkle from Rocky and Bullwinkle, and John Arbuckle, Garfield's faithful owner. All of those characters have been a part of Macy's Parade history. It's pretty clever how they managed to mix all of those characters together and touch upon Bart's rough parade history at the same time. Fire up the sewer gas! <coughs> 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 
Look at Futurama bringing on the insults. Sure, they're not as direct as Family Guy, but that calendar joke was flat out brilliant. Which one was your favorite? Any great ones we missed? Well, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to Screen Rant for more great content.